day or whatever. He's just like, it's about money. And that reminds you about what this country is about, what entrepreneurship means, and uh, about ultimately what podcasts are about. N and, but the difference being, with podcasts, it's not about money uh, in, by itself. It's money in relation to laziness. That's the key distinction. I will also give it up for Barbara Corcoran, who's the uh, the horniest shark. That's true. Because uh, any anytime there's a uh, anytime there's a, a guy from the military or just any guy who's moderately attractive, she's giving him the deal. She's giving him the deal, folks. As if they take her to dinner. All right. So yeah, she's me tooing everybody. It's amazing. All right. So we're gonna do we're gonna do here now at South by Southwest. We're gonna do we're gonna do Pod Tank. We got some we got some guys here. We got some pitches. Uh, and we're gonna we're gonna be the the pod sharks. Yeah. And I'm, well, I'm putting up real money here. I'm gonna be an angel investor in one of these podcasts here today. Well, you know, we're gonna have some podcasts pitched to us, and you, you give it to us, the original kings of content. We're the podcast entrepreneurs. You bring us your podcast idea. Entrepreneurs, please. And we're we're gonna make some dreams here today, or crush them. Hopefully, on, mostly crush. <laughs> depending on how it goes. So, Chris, you want to get kick this off? Yes. But first, let us introduce the sharks. Will Meneker. By figuring out how to rip MP3s off YouTube, Will Meneker created one of the most profitable podcasts ever and is now a podcast thousandaire. He's an angel investor in The Gay Chapo, also known as Seeking Derangements, and a frequent guest on Come Town. Felix Biederman overcame an upper middle class childhood and ADHD slash autism before it could get you pussy to become one of the youngest media executives in New York history at age 25. At age 25, Felix was a thousand dare with tens of thousands of listeners and a high single digit body count. Now, years later, at 24, Felix is a thousand dare with low double digit body count and the Moonvale Katana in Elden Ring. He has management deals with podcasts about List and Episode One that are so abusive, both shows have attempted signing with Birdman and Cash Money. Matt Crisman is just happy to be here. All right, I think for sure, so our pod tank, uh, I think I think Matt Matt is going to be Mr. Wonderful. Of course. I'm going to be Cuban. And Felix, I think you want to be like sort of a hybrid of Damon and Barbara Corcoran. Yes, yes. Horny <laughs> with swag. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right. Should we bring up our first? Let's bring uh, up our first, our first, pod, first pod, yeah. pod pitch. All right, is Monty Taylor in the house? Uh, yeah. Uh, maybe go up that way or that way. I don't know. Anyway, oh, God. it's always a long Monty road. Monty Taylor is a staff member at UT's Electronic Music Studios with an idea to examine and celebrate one of cinema's most iconic and idiosyncratic actors. Here's Monty. Sharks. Now, I know normally it's not advisable to get into a podcast space that's already crowded, like movie podcasts. That said, the reason that that space is crowded is because there's lots of money to be made there. And more importantly, I think with the right timing, the right niche, and the Chapo promotional machine behind it, we can make a lot of money with the New Cage Outlaws, the Nicolas Cage podcast. Now, the meat of the podcast is a series of movie reviews over uh, Nick, Nicolas Cage's 100 plus films with uh, extra Patreon content that includes a reading series from various interviews and, and articles about Nicolas Cage, examining his neo-shamanic, as he calls it, acting process, as well as perhaps a best of the worst style uh, duel between multiple films, uh, cage fight, if you will. And so I'm asking for a $10,000 investment for a 5% stake in the new Cage Outlaws in order to build a state-of-the-art podcast studio in Brooklyn. Okay. This is, a, this is a pretty juicy idea, but sort of the meat of the podcast business is the desperation of the listener to be friends with the hosts. By having a Nick Cage-centered podcast, you may be upsetting the ratio of the ideal podcast paying audience, which is 95% male. How would you how would you intend to achieve this ratio? To achieve ninety percent male. Well, first you have to have two men. Obviously, there can't be any women unless they're special guests, right? I'm listening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and furthermore, to only make references to things that that dudes give a shit about. Okay. All right. All now, right. Well, I have a question here. What's proprietary about this idea? What's to stop me 
from starting my own Nick Cage podcast and crushing you like the cockroach that you are. <laughs> Do you want to put the effort into making a Nick Cage podcast, Matt? I mean, I don't... This is that's the point. The I, see, effort is the enemy of podcasting. That's the thing. He's like, got me on that one. one. Here, we're you got me on that one. We're trying to examine the delta between laziness and profit. Mm -hmm. I like Nick Cage. I think he's a he's a remarkable human being, a remarkable actor. I would it would be incredibly easy for me to just watch yeah. these. Whereas for someone like you, Matt, who goes on long rants about why everything's awful, I I don't I can't see you getting through more than a couple films right. before you give up on this idea. I've been and I'm sorry. I, I think you're you're okay. a fantastic person, but I don't know if you could do it. Yeah. All right. I've been hanging in the cut here. Okay. I've been my fingers have been steepled. I've been hanging in the cut listening to this. Okay, you you you've correctly identified the hurdle that you have to clear here clear here, which is that the movie podcast space is heavily saturated. And on top of that, the Nick Cage meme space is bordering on becoming insufferable. We were just walking around down here, downtown Austin. There I are multiple, uh, Austin is a city for people who want to print out memes and share them in, in real space. However, however, as a creator of Movie Mindset, I'm, 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 I'm a natural investor for this podcast here. So, but I would just like to ask you once again, what is, what, what is your show going to bring to differentiate yourself from other movie podcasts and other Nick Cage based uh, meme content? So the way I see it, we can go sequentially through each and every one of his films, examining the evolution of his artistic process over time, and then you know corresponding that with the decay of his uh, his you know back tax status, for example, <laughs> and then try to make over time a very detailed look meta analysis, if you will, of of Nick Cage as an actor and his evolving process through these films. Okay, I got one question for you. Yes. What is your favorite Nick Cage performance? Mm -hmm. My favorite Nick Cage performance. And it's all yes. riding on this. It indeed, yes. Oh, God. I had it I had it in my head earlier. No. You're, not, you're not prepared? Oh, boy. Oh, you're, you're oh boy. You're coming to the it. tank. <laughs> you're coming to the tank. You have to know your stuff. I'm uh, sorry. This, this hurts my uh, confidence in you uh, as an investment. As a businessman, I am kind of have a little bit of nerves that you didn't just immediately lie when you didn't have the answer. Yeah, like that's the key is You're that right, if you don't have fault. it, you just say something and then uh, make off. it face up. Off. There we go. Mm, okay. Okay. It's a credit. Okay. credible uh, response. It okay. took a little time, though. It took a little right. time. Yeah. Okay. What would you say to a deal? I'm, I'm ready to make a deal for the Nick Cage podcast. What would you say okay. to a deal in which I, I, I invest $300, which is what I gave Seeking Derangements. That's the cost, okay. of, a, that's the cost of a Zoom uh, recorder, a Zoom recording device. Okay. That's that's the that's the, that's the bread and butter of any podcast, and what I'm talking about is a licensing deal here. So okay. not not only will you get the money for the Zoom recorder, but I will be a guest on an episode of the Nick Cage podcast and guarantee you at least ten retweets of the Nick Cage podcast thing in exchange for fifty percent of every penny that you make on the show. For fifty percent <laughs> of every penny. Okay. No, I'm not really going to do that. <laughs> I I I, I want to make this a licensing plan. Yeah. Okay. How uh I, I'll give you the three hundred dollars for the Zoom. Okay. Uh, no equity, no percentage, but I get a hundred dollars every time you mention his hairline. <laughs> for in perpetuity, that's the deal. I uh I make a personal rule of not investing in things that I don't fully understand and uh. W with movies, a lot of the time, the problem that I have really is that they're long. Also, all the human facial expressions. The human facial expressions. Uh, sometimes I leave my Adderall in New York when I'm on tour. And frankly, sometimes I'm on my phone. And I'm going to pass unless we can ink some sort of deal in Bulgaria or one of those countries. Okay. Can I try to tr sw sweeten the pot for you? Okay. Okay, so... I know that you're a big fan of the filmmaker Alexander Payne, yes? Yes. Okay, I will swing the deal by performing all the tech duties, all the editing, everything you need to make a an offshoot Alexander Payne podcast. This could be House of Pain, Here Comes the Pain, or just or anything else you want. It could be an offshoot of This Is Sus, whatever you want to do. I will take care of all the labor to make that make that podcast happen for you. Right. That is very enticing. Uh, we cannot call it House of Pain. I've had enough legal ba battles with Tyler Perry. <laughs> uh, and Everlast. And Everlast. But, but it's with the Y, so... I'm, uh, 
that's the show is too, the show sir. Is too, yeah. Um, all right. Um, how about this? With, with the Alexander Payne on ramp here, how about uh, I have? Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna gouge you like these guys. Okay. I only get let's say 15 percent of every penny. Okay. okay. But I have what's called Class B shares in your company, okay. meaning that uh, for my 15% stake, I have 75% voting equity, <laughs> <laughs> meaning that uh, I, I basically control the company. And I control things like dividends, Patreon payouts. When he goes to the bathroom? When you go to the bathroom, yes. All right, I'm things gonna, like that. Don't, 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 let, don't let these other sharks fleece you here. I mean, like that, they, they, they're, they're ruthless. But here's the thing. Do you want to partner with a shark who is a fan of Alexander Payne movies because they represent the six movies he's seen in his life? <laughs> or do you want to go with Mr. Movie Mindset? All right, I'm willing to take away my licensing fee. $300 start of, start of money for the podcast. And I will be a guest on the Nicolas Cage podcast and retweet it. Do we have a deal? So you're, you're giving up any equity. Is I'm, right? I'm giving up equity. I'm just the, uh, 300 bucks. I'll be a guest on the Nick Cage podcast. For Mr. Movie Mindset. For Mr. Movie Mindset. Do we have a deal right now? Is there any counter offers? Okay, you lost it. Oh, you but just, dude, <laughs> what are you doing? You're blowing it. Oh, man. Okay. You're blowing it. Okay. Let's rewind the clock. 30 seconds. Do we have... Okay. Ah, back on. Uh, uh, We're back uh, on? Okay, it's $200 now. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. All right, are you on Venmo? I am on Venmo. All right, let's, let's do this right now. <laughs> type, type in your name here. Or what do you got here? Uh, type, type in your Venmo name. Okay. Will Menneker has made a deal for no equity in the company. <laughs> Do and, and one guest appearance on the Nick Cage podcast. All right, why don't you guys go up and do that now, and I'll bring up the next guest. Right, do it. Uh, give it up for Monty and the New Cage Outlaws. Welcome next to the stage is uh, Scott Rigel here. Scott Rigel is an almost day one Chapo supporter with an idea to create content and monetize Chapo's most annoying fans. Thank you, thank you, Sharks. Thank you, Chapo's. May I, may I present the Sharks with a bribe first? Oh, that's a, a, yes. that's a key right. shark tank okay. component, yes. Yeah. Treats and, and bribes are, are, are essential. So, so for your first uh, sojourn into Texas, I got you an essential piece Ooh. of Texas history. Memorial Ooh. Coaster. Of the Texas Theater, where Lee Harvey Oswald was arrested after Beautiful. allegedly Ma Monty, Monty, while watching the through? film, while watching the film. Okay, Monty, Monty has just been his Nick Cage cast has just been uh, that's just been fun. Excellent. Yes. All right. This is this is a Thank shark. Thank you so much for this. This is this theater where Lee Harvey Oswald was arrested. Yes. Yeah. You know, War, War is Hell was War is playing, Hell by yeah. Van with Van Heflin, I believe. Yes. Yeah. You that's know. excellent. That's good. That's a good start. You're starting well. We see, yeah, we see a lot of people come across, uh, come across this stage. Uh, a lot of losers, a lot of jokers, a lot of people who, in a better era, would be thrown in a debtor's prison <laughs> because they don't do their homework. You, my friend, have done your homework. Yeah, you this is a like. hell of a gift. Yeah. Day one listener. Yeah. This is something. Cheers. You know what? This is something I can put my disgusting, oh, bubbly glass of water <laughs> on my nightstand. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. We're talking about doing our research for the sharks here today. Are you wearing the fall a fall t-shirt? Ooh. Wow. That is folks. Honestly folks, unfair right there. That kind of obsequiousness will get you nowhere in the tank. I don't know who that is, so it's fine. All right, sharks. So the key to making money is using a resource that you have endless supply of for free. And what does Chapo have more of? Been the most annoying guys in your mentions on Twitter that have ever existed. That's true. That's true. Yeah. My co my podcast is called Bye Bye Reply Guy. Mm. Okay. So we get four of the most obnoxious rose emoji, rose emoji gritty avatar mm. okay. Twitter accounts that you can pick out, and we get them on our show. And they think that they are competing. They think they are competing to be on your show. They think they are, you know, they're, they're testing out their best bants, their best riffs. They're talking about which shit libs got corn cobbed. 
They're talking about. Uh, they're talking about which chuds fucked around and found out. You they're know? saying my dude. My dude. Yeah. Oh, that's a yikes from me. You know. Okay. A lot Herbs. of herms. They're, they're 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 trying out their posts that they meant to put on the Chapo subreddit before it got shut down. R.I.P. <laughs> Rest <laughs> in piss. One of the best spinoffs we ever did. We pawned it off on seeking derangements in an all cash deal. <laughs> that that's that's some financial mindset right there. That's why you're the shark. Absolutely. But instead of being a guest on your show, their prize is the actual forbidden knowledge that this whole time Chapo Trap House has actually been a CIA psyop to destroy the nascent left in America. Okay. Red Kahina was right. The Twitter yep. Maoists were right. Okay. It's an intriguing debate. And, and ad, as an added bonus to you, they stop replying to you entirely. They... They, uh, they go into a mania a la Gene Hackman at the end of the conversation, tearing apart their apartment, and they are out of your mentions forever. They become fans of Truanon, though, and uh, at, they hassle Truanon instead to make an episode about you and then hassle them to come to Texas for years and years instead of you. Okay, but I, un I understand what you're, what you're offering us. But, but, you know, how, how does this help you? Because right. essentially you're making a show with the worst content imaginable. Yeah. yeah. Who is the audience for this? That's the real question. The audience is your endless supply of Chapo uh, reply guys mm, yeah. who think they will be, have a shot on being on your show. It's okay. an aspirational thing. Okay. I, I, I got to say to you, you know, you, you, you have the good instinct here of, you know, you know, 